Welcome back to London on this misty, murky October's day. Behind me is the Shard, which is actually the tallest building in Western Europe, but you have to take my word for that because the top of it is currently coated by fog. And it's hoped that economic gloom will be lifted from the UK this week when GDP is expected to show that the country is now out of technical recession. And I've been speaking to Alejandro Zambrano from dailyfx.com about this very important fundamental release. UK GDP is out this week. It's expected to show the UK economy is out of recession finally, so it's an important data release. Yeah, it definitely is, but uh, I am not that optimistic. I think it's going to be more of a technical type of rebound just because we had the Jubilee holidays. Uh, if we look at the PMI indicators uh, lately, just published uh, two weeks ago, they don't look that good. And with that in mind, I, it's not that I'm bearish bearish, but I do believe that we will get some type of a low. But at least in the short term, you know, I don't think it's going to be enough to allow Bank of England not to continue with this uh, asset purchase program. And that, in essence, is devaluating the pound. Yes, yeah, so, so essentially you're saying that there's still underlying problems in the UK economy? Definitely. I mean, we're getting a little bit of a bounce. We saw this in many other markets too, primarily in the U.S. And I'm very optimistic on the U.S. I did think I do think we find a cyclical low in the business cycle. Yet, uh, usually this tends to translate into strength in the European economies with a lag about say six to nine months. So I think we are in in, in a period of like uh, in a cyclical low in the U.K. But it's not going to be a strong rebound at all. And this is of course going to limit Bank of England. Yeah, so so, so that, that makes it very interesting for the sterling, doesn't it? Because, yeah. as you said, we're likely to see some sort of positive data uh, in terms of that it's likely to be take us out of recession. So how is this going to affect the, the sterling? I mean, I do believe, as I said, that we will get good data. But in the short term, most of this is priced in. We need to get some really, really strong numbers. Pound sterling is already elevated. So I think we could easily get, see a decline down to, say, one... Um, say 156 before traders actually start to see some value because we need to remember we moved higher on you know QE uh, from the US but also of course here in the uh, Eurozone where central banks have been very expansionary and, and look at support the markets but in essence that's being priced in I think we will get good data fairly good data but this is not going to be enough to stop Bank of England so we're going to drift lower. So as long as trade on the 163, maybe we can come down to say 156. And from that, val at that level, people are going to look to buy again. We, we finished the week on some very important data from the US, US GDP. Yeah. So you, earlier you said that you're bullish on the US. Are you yeah. expecting that to exceed expectations? Definitely. Uh, last month, we got a very good uh, ISM report indicating a cyclical low that we already passed the cyclical low. We got strong on the subcomponent on employment index, strong levels. You also looked at the relationship between inventories and new orders indicating a nice bounce. And we're seeing this. However, very much like with the euro dollar in this case, right? We've been trading between 128 and 132 for almost a month. We hit the peak when we got the non-farm payrolls report. So good data is not necessarily helping us now. I believe that it's priced in. And also here, I do expect that as long as trade under 132, that we can drift lower to say 126 before, sorry, 128 before uh, people actually start to buy again. What about if we get bad data? Because that's the interesting thing with the US dollar, because it does have this safe haven status. Yeah. But if negative US news comes out, it doesn't necessarily mean that money flows into the US dollar. So if it does come in worse than we expected, how would you expect the greenback to react? I, I still think the greenback will uh, increase in value. It's, it's very simple. It's the biggest bond market in the world. That's the only place you can hide your money when we have market turmoil. So I would definitely look for the dollars to strengthen on this. And as I said, as long as trade on 132, a drift down to say 128, preferably all the way down to 126. You know, that's when we see that price is undervalued in relation to central bank policies and the current economic outlook. Yeah, so, so let's just finish off by talking about the euro dollar. Yeah. As, as you said, it's been around this, this range of 128 to 132. Yeah. Do you think that's generally fair value? I mean, most people believe so, but it's as we can see, strong data, very strong data, 
even though you got central banks committed, you got Ben Bernanke telling us he's going to print money and support the markets independently on, you know, the way, well, not independently, but as long as the economy is not really, really strong. The market is still not heading higher, though. And price, because it's not heading higher, I do believe that many investors are starting to become nervous. And we still see a little bit of sell off taking us down to 128 at least. So, Alejandro Zambrano from the dailyfx.com there. Later this week, I'll also be speaking to IG Markets and RBS, so there's still plenty more to stay tuned for here on Duke's Copy TV. But for now, from the banks of the Thames, goodbye.